three weird mice. Let's see how they work. Greetings. And this is an LGR thing about three weird mice. <laughs> At least I, I don't know, they look a little weird, uh, but maybe not weird enough to do an entire dedicated episode on each of them individually. So yeah, I'd kind of clump them together as I have done with a video in the past and that seemed to go over okay and it was fun. So uh, let's do that. Plus it gives me a chance to go through some of my collection of weird computery things and get a video done while I'm working on more involved videos about other things. Anyway, mice, let's look at them. Oh, I am ready to make it so with this one. So we have a Star Trek Next Generation Type 1 Phaser Mouse. Energize your workstation. It's not a transporter, but okay, we'll energize regardless. Windows compatible computer mouse, authentic. Action phaser sounds, I'm intrigued by that. And electronic phaser beam lights. <laughs> Federation issue. Ergonomic design, sleek handheld size. I mean, you know, a phaser does have a kind of vaguely mouse shaped design, I guess, if you uh, change it enough, and they did. Light effect enhanced for packaging. Yeah, so it doesn't actually shoot phasers, uh, sorry to say. And uh, it does actually come with a battery. I'll probably just use a new one, but anyway, that's that. Quality's guaranteed, and check out all these other collectible Federation issue accessories. I got a portal of the future monitor mirror, communicator clock, enterprise quad CD jewel case, shuttlecraft CD holder, and a 1701D CD holder. I want all of these. Oh yeah, 1997 is when this was released by Fun Source. I'm not really familiar with them, but it was distributed in uh, computer stores and anywhere you'd buy software by GT Interactive. I do remember seeing this sold right alongside some of the Star Trek games. I had never had one back then, but I always thought it looked really cool. Oh yeah, here we go. So we've got a manual and three and a half inch floppy disk. This looks like a 720k disk, not 1.44 meg. So that's a thing. And that is not glued on. Looks like it's just taped on. There we go. Oh yeah, and it is a nine pin serial mouse. It's not PS2. Ooh, that did not feel how I thought it would. Those are not very satisfying buttons and they are very stiff and rather tough to press down. What? <laughs> it's dead or dying. Well, okay, so I guess the battery was in there all this time since the 90s just being unused without any little pull-out tab keeping it from <laughs> being active. Oh, well, does it say like try me on the front? It doesn't. Although I can see on the plastic now where people were clearly testing it out in stores, like pressing the button to hear the phaser sound. Okay, let's see if we can get a sound that sounds actually like it should now. I mean, it tries. <laughs> it's very quiet. Well, that's kind of cool. And there's these buttons. I don't know what those do. And like I said, the mouse buttons feel terrible. These buttons actually kind of feel better than the normal mouse buttons. Although these do have a nice click to them. Like I said, there's just like an extra bit of resistance there. I thought that that was futile, but I guess not. Okay, let's see here. Uh, all right, so those are sound one and sound two buttons. Interesting. Join the official Star Trek fan club. $20? I mean, if I had 20 bucks back then, I probably would have done it. Okay, so that's that sound we've already heard. Huh, this is like a pulsing phaser sound? Rapid fire phasering? Uh, all right. <laughs> Let's try this out with its software. See what we got. Yeah, setting phasers from stun to windows. And, oh dear. <laughs> Sensitivity is 
way down. And just as I thought, those mouse buttons are terrible. Oh boy. Ah, that's a little better. Those are bad mouse buttons. It, it's just, there is so much force required. I didn't think I'd be needing to use so much of the force in Star Trek. But uh, anyway, in terms of mouse feel, this is actually pretty good. Man, it feels straight up like a mouse. Like they obviously modified it a bit from the screen type one phaser, but not a whole lot. Yeah, I will say that the rollers do not feel quite up to par. Maybe they just need to be broken in a bit. Sometimes that is the case. Gotta warm these old balls up, you know? Sometimes that's just what you need. That's a little better. Okay, let's see if I can do... Yeah, it's... Ooh, dear. It's like way off. It's brand new, so it's perfectly clean. But those rollers, man, they are not doing their job as they should be. It's getting caught on this vertical. Like, see this? I'm moving the mouse down all the way down the pad. Now, if I put more pressure, kind of works, but no, this is not going to go well. But let's try an appropriate game for a phaser mouse. Even though it doesn't have the same, to <laughs> the same type of phaser in the game itself. Yeah, good old Elite Force. Let's do Dangerous Cargo. I'm going to be Paris for the win. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I think there's only the Type 2 phaser in here, as well as the Type 3 or the... Or whatever they called it in Voyager, the big old phaser rifle thing. I had in DS9 as well, but anyway. Initiating program. Because see, the Type 2 or whatever, it's got like the, uh, the handle thing and... The Lieutenant buttons Commander and the whole front Crewman part of it's Alma different. Guzman. Whatever. Commander Chakotay. Crewman Rick Beesman. Lieutenant Les Fox. Ah, suck it, Tuvok. Paris for the win. Yeah, Foster's dead. Chakotay, I've been holding a grudge against you for years. I feel so inadequate against your manliness. This mouse is bad. Oh, the buttons feel bad. The accuracy is not good because something is going on with those rollers in there. Okay, that was a good kill. But hey, at least I can make my own phaser sounds uh, on the mouse and in the game. How neat. Ah, get out of here. Tuvok, no! <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Tuvok wins the match. <laughs> you ranked second. Yeah, well, I think we all know why. Oh well, it was a good attempt. Oh, and by the way, the uh, the software that it came with, there is nothing on here. It says it has mouse driver and utilities, but they are just for setting up the mouse in DOS. Even if you set it up in Windows, you know, the only thing you get are some basic mouse drivers and a test program, which Windows 95 doesn't need at all. But you know, you do get this uh, if you were to set it up in DOS. I was hoping it would come with some cool, like, Star Trek mouse cursors or something. But no, instead, uh, we got sound effects and blinking lights. That's about it. All right. So this mouse here is in a rather nondescript white package. Uh, there are some markings on the sides to let you know kind of what it is, but not fully. It is a compact mouse from the Roland Corporation, but yeah, <laughs> it's designed to look like one of the Boss Corporation's effects pedals. <laughs> uh, look at this thing. So yeah, the Boss Corporation is a division of Roland and they've been making Oh man, all kinds of great effect pedals for guitars and, well, really, whatever you want to plug into them for decades. And I think this one in particular, the Super Overdrive SD1, 
was originally out in 1981. As for when this mouse was actually released, I I don't know. <laughs> I've looked, and I mean, this one, yeah, this one appears to be manufactured in 2013, which is, if that's to be believed, a little later than I thought. But um, I've seen some of these that were apparently put together in like 2002 originally, and they went on sale, or I don't think they were actually on sale at first. I think they were just a promotional item. This is weird. But yeah, then later on, they did make them available for sale on the uh, Roland website. And now you can find them secondhand, like I did here. So uh, yeah, not a whole lot going on with the paperwork. I do have a model number there, BCMD1, but no dates. And then on this side, uh, actually, yeah, we do have a date right here, 2009. So I guess this one in particular was at least manufactured or uh, put to market in 2009. Like I said, I've seen some of these SD1 mice in 2002. I mean, there were entire box sets of these things available at one point. That's just a pretty cool way to celebrate an anniversary. But yeah, why did they choose a mouse? I don't know, I guess somebody was just thinking, um, you know, these effects pedals are vaguely mouse shaped. The pedal doesn't actually go down or anything, but it does have a, a mouse feel that's not too bad. Uh, these knobs don't rotate. They do sort of weirdly shift around. And then the mouse wheel uh, doesn't actually press down as a button, but there it is. You can scroll that way with your thumb. That's not a button either. Uh, pretty nifty, I think. Of course, it's USB, so let's try this out. Okay, Boss Super Overdrive SD1 mouse plugged in via USB and working just fine as a USB mouse, because that's what it is. And uh, yeah, it's an optical mouse. It is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with the sensor whatsoever. And it actually feels like a mouse. <laughs> it's just a really good idea in terms of using a guitar pedal like this as a mouse. It's a delightfully unintended use of the shape. Now, I will say that the wheel on the side, that takes some getting used to. It is not very confidence inducing. It moves almost too easily. And the clicks are uh, clicky, but not in a super satisfying way like some of the old Logitech mice. It doesn't feel great. And you know, the fact that you can't you actually use it as a button is unfortunate. Like why is this middle one not a button? Should be, but it's not. Let's try some Virtua Cup for a gameplay test. Super Overdrive, Super Arcade Gaming. Oh yeah. No music, I guess I don't have the CD in there. Yeah, perfectly serviceable. Of course, the, uh, <laughs> the sides of the mouse aren't necessarily designed the best for like gripping, just the way I grip anyway with uh, my thumb and the last two fingers here. And the more I'm clicking these buttons, I really do not like them. It's because of the wobbliness. And I was noticing that earlier, like it's just odd. It wobbles on this like base in the middle there, almost like it's a little, a little joystick. Now, I assume that is simply because the uh, like straight up and down shape of these little, well, they, they would be wheels, but they're not. Uh, it, that maybe wouldn't make sense of them. Like when you're pressing, you're, it is sort of like you're pressing at an angle, right? So it makes sense. It's just loading fallout now. Okay. But uh, yeah, like whenever you're, you're clicking, it naturally wants to move forward. So I would have rather them just mounted it a little bit forward. I don't know, as it is, it just feels like you're, you're fingering little joysticks. Every click just feels slightly off, like, yay. I don't know, because of the, the wobbly nature of it. And then um, the fact that my thumb is resting on this unsatisfying wheel and the sides over here are not contoured and shaped. There you go, rats. Anyway, for a, uh, a pedal based on a <laughs> a pedal for a mouse based on a guitar pedal. It's not the worst and hey, it's got optical sensors, which is different from the others. If nothing else, I just love the way it looks. It's kind of a fun gimmicky mouse 
for musicians or anyone into Boss products, but otherwise kind of underwhelming. <laughs> well, this looks cozy. This is the Cozy Coop Mouse Coupe, if you're that way. Uh, Little Tykes Interactive. Yeah, they had a number of computery products for kids. Comes with a copy of Jumpstart Preschool. How fun is that? Yeah, so this is looking like the, the classic uh, little tykes thing that you ride around in as a kid is like a little foot-powered dealio. I don't know how internationally known that is, but here's what it looks like when it's full size. Yeah, I never had one. By the time I did see one, it was like younger siblings of other kids that I knew, so it was already too small for me. But man, I always like these kind of things. As a really young youngin, I was more into the big wheels though. I mean, who wasn't? Whatever though, that's beside the point. This is the mouse designed to look like it and I think it's fantastic. And check this out, it's a little bit of throwback to LGR things of the past. The Young Explorer Computer Center, which yeah, I actually found one of those while uh, perusing antique shops and thrift stores years back. <laughs> I was really surprised to run across one. Anyway, the Cozy Coop Mouse is designed to make navigating a mouse easy and fun for kids. Yeah, navigating just the mouse, not navigating the computer. Anyway, uh, apparently it's a high quality, durable design. I am curious about that because uh, these things are infamous for like just not being able to be destroyed. It's made of such a thick polymer plastic something or other that is insanely durable. And it has a smell to it that I remember. <laughs> oh, I really like this. Oh, it's super cute. Uh, I've got a PS2 connection there and a ball mouse mechanism on the bottom, of course, being from the 90s. This is from 1999, by the way. So, uh, yeah, look at that. Oh, wow, there is not a lot going on in there. That is fairly empty. The mechanisms, like the little wheels, optical sensor things, aren't even hidden away or covered up. That seems uh, like not a great design for a thing to be used by kids. That could get gumped up even more easy than normal for a ball mouse. Very, very satisfying mouse buttons too. We got a cool car license plate on the back. I got, I got a little a little top to cover up the rain. If it's raining on my fingers, they won't they won't get wet. All right, so what does it smell like? Ah, it doesn't smell like that particular kind of, uh, it, it's like a Rubbermaid smell. In fact, I think Little Tykes devices were, aren't they made by the same company? I want to say they are. Ah, uh, yeah. A division of Newell Rubbermaid. So it doesn't have that kind of smell or feel. This feels like cheap and terrible compared to uh, Little Tykes, like actual toys and things. But now, nah, whatever. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, we got a KB Gear Interactive. I guess they are the people that made this particular product. Yeah, as well as some of the others. Look at this Jam Cam version 2. I wonder if that's the same thing as like the Barbie camera and the pro wrestling one and the Nick click. Inside they're all the same thing, but the software differed and of course the plastic around the outside of the camera anyway. And the Pablo, I've never heard of this. Huh, 8x6 graphics tablet, it's like a Wacom for kids. And a Junior Net, hmm. Interactive learning service for your family. This is like kids AOL. <laughs> Okay, uh, we share your concern that a child is just one click away from chat rooms and inappropriate content. And this doesn't do that, presumably. Well, isn't that fun? Yeah. So that is definitely like a, man, kids internet portal. Would have been pretty cool. Of course we got, oh yeah, a copy of uh, Jumpstart Preschool. Just the game itself looks like the normal, yeah, full version. Sweet. Yeah, 16 page manual. And it looks like maybe Jumpstart is probably the only thing about this that is uh, anything cool at all because, yeah, the software is just Jumpstart and this Junior Net, which I, I seriously doubt we can do anything with because it would have been an online dial up thing in the 90s. All right. The Little Tykes mouse car thing. Let's check it out. All right, ready to drive away with the Little Tykes cozy comfort coupe or whatever it is. 
Uh, no drivers needed. <laughs> and then, yeah, okay, well, anyway. Uh, yeah, so it's just, it's just ready to go, you know, standard PS2 mouse. The sensitivity is rather up there, so I'm gonna put that down just a bit. My goodness, those buttons are amazing. Oh, I just crashed something. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna say, those buttons feel fantastic. And that ball, mm, it's so smooth. And honestly, the shape isn't that bad either. <laughs> a little weird having this going on with the uh, the roof. But yeah, I don't think it's gonna get in the way. Uh, who would have guessed that the little, little tyke's mouse would have been the best of this bunch, perhaps. <laughs> like that is a confident mouse click. Can't stop doing it. As for the software, yeah, the Junior Net CD, it doesn't know what to do with it at all. Which I figured, I mean, during setup, it was like, please connect to your internet service provider and all these things. I, I don't have any kind of dial up, of course, or any internet connected to this machine. And even if we did, hey, you know, it wouldn't connect to anything. So, uh, Jumpstart Preschool, gotta get that going. I did not grow up with these, but I am rather fond of them, even though I've only played them as an adult for videos. Balls, yeah. All right. Good evening. My name is Casey. Whoa. I'm so glad we're in preschool together. Me too. And it is evening and it's Sunday and it's got the right, not the right time. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock, five, six, seven o'clock. You know what? This is great. You can click on things, things happen. Little mini games for learning. Let's find out. Heck yeah. Rectangle. Oh yeah. Rectangle. Dude, I'm so good. It's a match. Diamond. Oh, Square. I suck now. Diamond. Diamond. Yes. It's a match. Sure is. I can even right click Square. on them. Wow. Square. It's a match. This is a good mouse. So good, in fact, I can think of only one game that's worth testing it with. Unreal Tournament. If I can snipe dudes with a little plastic car mouse, then this is gonna be a good evening. Oh yeah. It's on the way. I've got a little tyke's car. First blood. <laughs> <Headshot. Double kill. laughs> Oh, let's go. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> oh, that didn't hit anybody. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Little tykes! Oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Oh, I shouldn't have jumped down that way. Well, you know. I actually really like the way that these little wheels are in the back part, because that's a natural place for my thumb and pinky to rest. I got it, yeah. Leave it to the little tykes to save the day. Congratulations, you are the winner. You dang right I am. <laughs> this is just, oh, way better than it has any right to be. Those are great mouse buttons, good ball, good hand feel. What in the world that's unexpected. And hey, if you found this video unexpectedly enjoyable, then awesome. Maybe check out my other weird mice video that I did a while back. I'm sure, I'm not sure, but I might do more if y'all wanna see more. And uh, yeah, if nothing else, do check out more LGR things as I continue to make them here on this very channel. And as always, thank you for watching.